Mr. Ramu, can you start? Yes, sir. <coughs> yes, sir. Oh. Uh, good morning, students. Good morning, one and all. It's my great pleasure to welcome you all. Welcome to today's one day workshop on automation using UA. Before welcoming, before introducing, before getting to this workshop, let's uh, I hand over the session to for HOD to say a few words and to welcome our chief guest, Mr. Sudhir Nimegada. I'm over to you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes. Um, so it's my pleasure to welcome our guest of the day and uh, happy morning to you all. And thanks to each and everyone gathered here for making this morning much brighter. On behalf of the CSC department, principal and KCG management, it gives me immense pleasure in welcoming you all. So we started, we humans started computerizing the processes that were done by the human beings. And now we are in the era of computerizing the process done by the computers also. So this shows how much important the robotic process automation is going to be. And RPA is reducing, of course, the human effort spent on the computers over various repetitive tasks. So it's my pleasure to welcome you all for this uh, technical workshop, Robotic Process Automation, which is highly needed a need of the R. And I'm glad that Mr. Sudhir is here with us to impart his knowledge on RPA. And Sudhir is uh, Mr. Sudhir is an uh, uh, certified UI trainer and he is a very good speaker and it's my pleasure to welcome you sir again and again and uh, we are happy to have you here and I'm sure that this day would make my students to think of various opportunities over RPA and this will help clear, clearly help our students to make the crystalline way of career path in any one of the current trending technologies and and that too with RPA. And once again, it's my pleasure to extend my warm wel welcome to one and all. Thank you. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Uh... Yeah. Hi, all. So. Uh, so first of all, thank you very much for giving the great opportunity. So for me to uh, share my knowledge to the. Uh, this much audience. Yeah. A few minutes. I want yeah. to introduce you to our students, please. Okay. Yeah. The students, you all know that our CC department uh, has a Center of Excellence in RPA, which is certified by UA Path. Under this center, they do conduct a lot of programs to introduce RPA to the students community. Last year, a program for skill of art was conducted by ICT Academy in association with the UA part. 63 students of us have participated and earned many certifications from UA part. In continuation of this, under this center, this year we got a a consultancy project from a company to develop a chart part. It's a three month project. The development is yet to start. We welcome a student team to develop this chart part. Those who have interest can approach me. We know that the RP is one of the trending technology. The job market is huge. It becomes inevitable. As a students, especially CC students must learn this technology. In view of this fact, under this center, today we have a one day workshop on automation using UA path. I would say that, they, uh, that we are very blessed to, to have a tech genius, a great developer, and architect. Mr. Sudhir Nimegada with us as a resource person for this program. Let me 
say a few words about our resource person. Pains an experienced automation specialist, RPA solution architect, certified UA path trainer, he won first prize in UA path power of automation, and award winner of oh. Tech Guru 2020, expert in UA path. There is technologies like uh, UiPath, C Sharp, Vivid Script, Vivid.net, Angular JS. He is one of the most important professional yeah. awarded by UiPath for the year 2022. He is a YouTuber teaching 24 by 7. He is available in the YouTube teaching UiPath. He has a lot of views, higher views and subscribers. He has a rich set of work experience. Worked as lead software engineer at EBM Systems. Senior, software, senior system analyst at ESG Global. Automation specialist at yeah. DHC Technology. Senior software developer at uh, George Technologies. Business planning analyst at HP, marketing lead at Knowledge Metrics. This is a small introduction. Once again, on behalf of our department, on behalf of our students and our management, we also welcome our resource session. And the session is, I come over the session to our resource session. Over to you, sir. Thank you. thank you very much, uh, Senka sir. Uh, yeah, so uh, thank you very much for a great introduction. Uh, uh, one one question, uh, Senka sir, uh, sir uh, is it uh, only specific to this college or so can I share this link to the other people who can able to join? Is it fine? Senka sir? Yes, sir. Actually, we plan for our students only. Do you remember what do you think, ma'am? But uh, we can share, right? People yes. outside the program, actually. Anyway, if there are not more numbers, yeah. more yeah. information. Oh. Oh. It would be great, sir. Actually, I think. <laughs> you, you, yes, sir. Yes, yeah. sir. Thank you very much. Yeah. 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 So let me share my screen. Uh, so. Uh, can you please uh, make me an organizer so, so unable to share my screen? Yeah, it's right, Is my voice is clear, audible or? Audible, no, audible sir, audible. Okay. I'm making a presenter. Wait, wait. You share it now? Yeah, <laughs> we will share. Are you able to see my screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, so before going to start the presentation, so I want to uh, run a single bot so to show what the bot is doing. So as I asked the, this now the question, okay. So we will share the link uh, to the people uh, who is in the groups. So maybe the they are they're the learners. They need the knowledge on UI path. And now I ran the bot, uh, all the audience, all the students, just see how, how the robot is doing. So I'm not doing anything, so the robot is doing. Uh, so like this, I, I promote any videos or any uh, topics which I shared in the YouTube. Okay, so what we are doing, so the robot is just searching the group name, so which we already configured in the text file. Okay, so within the text file, uh, we will just list out all the group names or uh, the contact names. So then the robot will just select, click on that search button and type the group name. And so click on the enter, then it will just uh, load the image which we already configured in the specific 
place in the our computer and the text also which text they have it has to send okay that is also we configured so everything is uh, automated so earlier what we we uh, i do so to promote anything like so for example just imagine i just created one video in youtube so i want to promote to the uh, multiple uh, groups so which groups is a uh, rp related groups okay so what i do manually i take a phone and uh, share the image and forward the images these things and all but now so uh, almost i spend uh, like a, so 15 to 20 minutes or more than that okay so to uh, do this kind of task for every day or whenever i want to share so but now i automated so not that means so uh, i no need to do this kind of task the robot is uh, doing the task on behalf of me so but outside any members from the that particular group so what they think they, they don't know whether it is a robot or human right so what we are doing so we are just automating the manual mundane task for this just just imagine see while the robot is running so just imagine to just forward the image and the text to the groups or some some whatsapp contacts so we don't need that much intel sense right it's just a, it's like a mundane repetitive task just click here type this okay so just click on the send button right so th there we are just doing the rpa robotic process automation so robotic process automation means we are automating the process which process here so while the robot is running this this listen here so what type of process the process is like it's a marketing job i'm marketing my videos or if i if i just start a course i'm going to start a course uh, next week okay so what i have to do so i have to market that course like a so to, uh, next month first first of the next month i'm going to start the a new course on the ua path then what i have to do so if i simply sit in my home so will the students will come or audience will come so who need the rpa knowledge no right what we will do we will just post in the facebook or change our status on the whatsapp right sharing into the multiple groups so then only the target audience target audience means so who is required the knowledge of the rpa they know about the this so what what i am doing so what is the process that is a marketing process right marketing process so process means in the robotic process automation the process means what is the process the process means any process now we are doing the marketing process yeah robot done you can see the list is configured here the groups all the groups so if tomorrow i want to add the new group i can add here okay let us see uh, okay so uh, uh, as we done the process yeah let's start our rp so coming to this so one today's session is a rpa robotic process automation and uh, so i am the mvp uh, mvp means most valuable professional so ua path give the awards like a mvp awards so every every year they will give the mvp awards they will select few people and uh, so uh, so they, they just uh, think that so these people are helping to the community to know the rpa to know the ua path it is like a so awareness giving the awareness to the multiple people then they selected recently 2022 uh, almost 100 mvps all, all over the world so i'm the one of the i'm also one of the uh, part of that particular 100 and a little bit about me so almost sankar sir already told about me like a uh, i have 11, 11 years of experience uh, almost 12 years of experience as it is a police almost uh, four years of experience in ua path too i won the ua path power of automation hackathon and uh, tech geek hackathon recently and uh, so 19 i got a prize on the power of automation 2021 so tech geek uh, first prize uh, i mean so this is a hackathon so, so where we are just uh, uh, showcasing and creating the new ideas which is not existed okay. and 2022 i got a award so and i used to uh, create a videos and share into the 
I used to create a videos and share in the YouTube channel. So here, a lot of videos are there sharing my knowledge to the uh, public. So uh, these, are, these are my YouTube channel. Just bringing into the chart. Chart is not available. OK, OK, yeah, later I will bring. OK, after that, I have a recently uh, working on this project, Bots DNA. This is also helping to the learners, UiPath learners who learn UiPath and they, they are, there is a lack of uh, uh, hands on experience. OK, so I do create a projects here. So these are all the almost 19 projects are available. Uh, these projects having the once you create, click on the projects. So this project having the all the data. And within this data, so we can just download the code, download the required files and requirement and step by step process explanation. So, so basically the main goal of this bot CNA technology is. Giving the uh, uh, my experience, so all, all, almost 12 years of experience I have sort of whole 12 years of experience. What all the projects I, 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 I done? So this type of projects I'm keeping into the here. So I, I come across multiple projects. Uh, that is a goal for this. And uh, so others, so public can just go to this website and uh, they can just um, download the, the download the required files and do the RPA. So this is only for RPA, not apart from that. So only for RPA tools. Okay. That is about myself. I'm coming to the what is RP robotic process automation. As I said, there is a process, so you have multiple processes, marketing process or uh, something like a HR process. So once a newcomer come come into the organization, so there is a like a onboarding process is there, right? And uh, I just imagine, so some people they are just uh, uh, there is a sales team, so they need the contacts, okay? So they are finding the contacts in the Google, Facebook and Twitter, right? So different different kind of uh, groups, they are just uh, finding the contacts and to sell their products. So that is a leads. Leads means like a, they are just uh, uh, extracting the leads from different uh, uh, kind of websites, right? Different type of sources like. So that is one process. Lead extraction, okay? So for example, uh, the another thing like so if, if there is a data which is not clean, the phone numbers is not clean or email is not clean, just verify whether the phone number is a uh, uh, so proper, proper phone number or email is a proper email or email is a business email or normal public emails like a Gmail, Yahoo, like that. So if you want to, that, that is a one process, cleaning the data, enriching the data, this kind of process is there, okay. So, so this is a process. You have multiple processes. Okay. To automate that process, automate means like so automating the process without human. What is automation? So early daily we are seeing multiple places. Uh, there is automations are we are, we are seeing right automations in in our home. We are, we are seeing multiple automations in outside. So you are seeing many automations like so. For example, ATM machines are that we automating the a process. So earlier, so if you want to deposit the money, you have to go to the bank and spend a lot of time in the queue and uh, okay, so waste of half day or one one day time, right? Now there is a deposit machines came like that. So automation means so if, if the deposit mission, it is a mission, right? So there is no human to work right so automation means without human if anything is going on that is called automation so washing machine is there without human it is doing right that is automation so whatever it is doing without human that is called automation and robotic means like so it's a mimicking the human mimicking the human actions means just now you saw a whatsapp marketing bot robot okay it is just mimicking the human it's not doing a, a new thing it is doing exactly the how the human is doing how the human what the human will do human just click on that search box and type the some name group name and click on the enter and click on the button browse the image 
right? So you don't know whether the human is doing or uh, robot is doing, right? So it is a mimicking the human. It won't do uh, beyond the human. So it's it's a mimicking the human. That's called robotic. Robotic process automation is we are automating the processes using the robot. So what type of process we have to automate? We can automate. We can automate the processes like a mundane, repetitive, uh, time-consuming tasks. Okay, that is called RPA. If you go to the next step, RPA advantages. As I said, it's an existing business process. It will work. No need to change entire business. So for example, if you take any other applications like uh, uh, softwares like Salesforce or uh, CRM, different kind of things. Sir. So they have to modify existing business. Earlier they are using the Excel. So now they have to change to the uh, some CRM applications. But in RPA, we are not doing, we are not changing the existing process. Earlier they are using the Excel, robot also using the Excel. Earlier they are sending the mails, robot also sending the mails. Earlier they are reading the PDFs, but humans, but the robot also reading the PDFs. Okay, so that's why the first point is like, so it works existing business process. And you know, so, so as I'm talking about the robot, robot, the robot is not like a physical robot. Okay, if I say robot, it's not physical robot, it is a virtual robot. As it is, it's is a piece of software. Basically, it is a piece of software. How we are training or we build the robot in the same way the bot will work, the software will work. Okay, we can call it as a, as it is a piece of software working in your computer and doing the tasks which you arrange, right? So that is a piece of software, but in RPA world, they are calling as a uh, robots. Uh, 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 they are calling as a bots because you can call it as robots and bots. So robot means if I call robot, so what will come into your mind? A physical robot, right? That's why to differentiate between the robot, uh, physical robots and virtual robots, we are creating the virtual robots, not the physical robots. Okay. That's why the in RPA world, people call it as a bots. The word called bots. If you go to the interviews, they will they will ask you how many bots you automated. Okay, uh, how many bots are in production? Right, these are all the terms they will they will use in regular basis. And automation is a not a new word. Basically. Automation is not a new word because see 1990s, 1980. So people, people are automating the tasks, but they are writing a lot of code. We can automate the task by using the PowerShell. We can automate the task by using the Python. We can automate the task by using the .NET, C Sharp, Java, any language, batch file programming, right? You can automate the task, but why RPA? We can automate using the multiple languages, so which is uh, which are existed long back. See, in using the C language or C plus plus language, you can automate the tasks. Understand? But why the word come into the RPA, robotic process automation? The automation is there, but you have to write a lot of code for that. Lot of code, multiple lines of code, and the maintenance is if if you. Uh, automate the process using the some other language. You wrote thousands of lines of the code and it's working fine. One fine day, just imagine there is a, some issue in the task, the automation. You want to change that into the code itself. Then it may affect into the other other place, right? So the main goal of the RPA is you can see at the last no coding is required. We are not going to write any coding in RPA. If you are writing multiple codes, multiple lines of codes, you should not call that as a RPA. Robotic process automation means it is a easy to automate the developers. So you can just simply drag and drop and arranging the logic and creating the parts. 95% coding is not required. Only 5% coding is required. That is that too. It is very less cases because everything is already immediately available. Everything is that they created multiple things, and 
uh, they, they kept as a one on library we can reuse the uh, the activities and uh, arranging the logic we can reuse we are not creating from the scratch we can reuse and arranging the blocks and automating the process that's it that's what that's the thing we are going to learn today and the rpa uh, if you are interested in the rpa also so the, that's what you are going to learn in this rpa okay here for example if you want to open the browser facebook.com you don't need to write a codes there is a activity called open browser just drag and drop and supply the inputs it, which they want okay. if you want to click somewhere in the website or by windows application just drag the click activity and tell the that click activity where to click that's it if you want to type something there is a type into activity just drag and drop and tell that where to type and what to type that's it you are passing the inputs and getting the outputs that's it so you are you are reusing the workflows okay so that's why there is no code required and as it's a robot it is a works 24 by 7 no sick leaves no vacation leaves because see it <laughs> somebody is uh, yeah so as it is a software see it will work 24 percent so as a human so it will just do the same kind of work 30 years 10 years there may be a, some uh, issue may happen uh, if the human is doing right so even though it is the same works daily work with the robots how you design in the same way it will work even though if it has errors you can just fix the errors and uh, release the new version and it will work as you design that's it how you design minimal errors and works with the unstructured data also so there is a two types of data unstructured and structured data the structured data means if you keep the if you arrange the data into the a tabular format like a rows and columns that is called structured data example can you just uh, give me the, some examples of the structured data where is a chart window here uh, is chart is available for the students uh, singer sir yeah no. yeah i think it's available sir okay in the chart, uh, what is the structured data? Structured data means I'm just saying that so it is a arranging the data into the multiple rows and columns. So can you uh, can anyone just give the uh, so example for the structured data in the chart window? I don't know. I'm not able to see the chat window, sir. Okay. Okay, fine. Yeah, no issue. So yeah, I will do. So yeah, structured, yeah, structured data means, for example, you know, like uh, which contains the specific uh, format of an Excel. Let's take an uh, let's take an example of Excel. Excel, so, Excel. Okay, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so if you take an example of Excel, like we'll be having uh, the you know the column names or column rows uh, having the proper naming conventions and all, which contains the data in a regular regularized format. So which can be treated as a structured data. So perfect, perfect. Uh, Sh Shuhas, uh, yeah. So uh, Shuhas said like so structured data example is Excel. OK, so and what are the other examples? The data table. So because every cell has address, column name and row in row index, right? So that is a structured data. So Excel is a structured data. CSV format is a structured data, comma separate values. And data table is a structured data. Excel is uh, and data database, Oracle, SQL, right? So any database. So if you're keeping the data into the tabular format, that is a structured data. So and what is unstructured? So, so it is a very easy to retrieve the specific value from the cells or rows and columns. So for the structured data, because it is arranged properly. But what about the unstructured data? Like okay, the data is in the documents, resumes are there. 
Okay, the data is in the uh, PDF files. Invoice is there, right? So we can automate such kind of things also using the RPA. So unstructured data, the PDFs is not uh, proper format. So sometimes the PDFs is a handwritten documents, or sometimes sometimes the PDF contains a a, a, a signature or, or tick marks, right? So we can interact with the unstructured data or, or sometimes they, like a, <coughs> there is a captcha or images. Uh, for example, uh, the data data is there in the images, right? See, if you take any, any, uh, anything like this, so this is a, this is a one invoice. You can't copy the text, right? Why, why you we can't copy the text from this uh, image? Because, because it is an image. So if it's not image, if it's a, just a HTML page or any Word documents, we can copy. But so using that, so suppose for example, uh, if you use a screen scrapping and select this one, using the OCR, optical character recognition, so you can just extract the information from the image also the, the data within the text see some information so we retrieved so your logo here so right so some information we retrieved so we can change the um, ocr engine so there is a multiple ocr engines available in the market you can extract so by changing the, something like so ocr engines and uh, uh, some properties we can extract the uh, the data from the image it's not 100 percent but yeah uh, so some extent so we can automate that is a call unstructured data it interact with the unstructured data and one use case here is okay if you see example from the healthcare improving the uh, patient outcomes so one task is doing by the doctor and the doctor efforts is like 100 percent so it takes a five minutes to complete the task the, the little bit so one kind of task okay so if you just automate 80 percent of the work and 20% uh, is a manual one minute it takes time so see here so it's like a mindset automation is like a mindset because first of all uh, the business has ha has should have a, this kind of mindset we have to automate what the team is doing we can automate can we automate the whole end to end so for example, one business has a 200 members who are working in the same kind of task every day. 200 employees are there. Okay. Can we automate the, the whole thing which 200 members are doing or not? This is like end-to-end -end automations, fully automated software where you're creating. If not, at least we have to think like a semi-automation, a partial. So, so how, what are the tasks they are doing daily basis? Just split the tasks and pick the low hanging fruits like a so whatever there is a RPA opportunity, automation opportunity is there. Pick the tasks and automate and reduce the effort of the human, the human employee, right? So that's why they are calling this FTE, full time employee. In interviews or in RPA world, people call it as a uh, people talk like this. How many MTE you saved? How many MTE you saved to automate this task? Right? So how many FTE you saved to automate this task? How FTE means full-time employee? An employee. How many number of employees work you automated and saves their uh, uh, time and their uh, salaries? Okay. It's not like a removing the jobs. Or it's not like a, uh, a jobs will. Uh, go if automation come into the picture. No, that is a not a true uh, statement. Okay, so by automating the tasks which the people are doing from years and years, the repetitive tasks we are automating, we're just allocating them to the a, a higher valuable works, not like a, this same kind of uh, same just open the website log into the website, click here, go there, just open the Excel, type this cell value into this text box, select this, see, understand? 
this is a repetitive task. So we have to, this is a mindset. So we have to think like, so we have to automate, we have to utilize the capability of the RPA and give the value to the organization. So one thing is like, so uh, the, the time, how much time you saved, right? The one thing, very important thing in the world, like so time. So you can't buy time, right? So here in by using the RPA, what we can do, we can save a lot of time. So like, like this example, five minutes for the single task is by human, one minute for the robot integration. So in RPA world, in bots, there is a two types of bots. One is attended bot and the other one is the unattended bot. Attended means a human is involved. As we saw here, human is doing 80% work. Sorry, my bad. Human is doing the 20% work, human efforts, and 80% uh, work is doing by the robot. So in this case, the second image you can see, in this case, you and that, that means human and robot work together and complete in their task. That is called attended. The name itself it is saying that attendance is required. Human attendance is required. Otherwise, human judgment is required. The robot will do do the work a certain tasks. For example, imagine there is a ten subtasks are there to automate single process. Ten subtasks in the process. Up to eight RPA opportunity is there. Automation opportunity is there. We can automate up to eight. It, it is automated by the robot and it will send a mail to the human. The remaining two steps like a verification or uh, judgment on the uh, specific things then human will do. That is called uh, attended automation. Unattended means there is no humans. A fully automated system. You just schedule based on the times it will run based on the times. For example, every day it has to run at the morning, five o'clock. You should do the robot in the five o'clock. The robot will wake up. The robot will do whatever the task you you give to that particular robot. Sometimes the every one hour we have to run the robot. Every one hour it will check the emails if the specific subject is uh, uh, the, the mail contains the mail subject contains this type of keyword. Just read the mail and download the images or attachments process so whatever the process we just design it will process so how many types of bots are there two types of bots attended unattended bots attended is like a human may trigger human may trigger human may uh, do the judgment okay human and robot both work together and complete the task unattended is like it's a purely uh, robot based so no no human is required it will run based on the timings which we schedule this is not UI path. This is a whole RPA world. Okay, so we are calling as two types of bots. And the same thing again in interviews, people call it as like so. How many unattended bots you developed? How many attended bots you developed? If they ask like so, how many bots you developed? Nine nine bots or ten bots? If you say how many are unattended, how many are attended? Okay. So that is a uh, language they are using. And let us see the next slide. RP tools are available in the market. Not only these things, which is appear in the screen, is not only these things. There is almost 50 plus or 60 plus tools are available in the market. Many tools are available in the market. RPA to, to RPA is a not tool. You have to understand. RPA is not tool. RPA is a methodology. For example. If I say mobile, you all have the mobiles, right? If I say mobile, mobile is a not a company, right? So it's a mobile means the, the, the device which you are using to call or receiving the calls, uh, sending the mails, receiving the mails, using the internet, there's a Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. This is called mobile. But if I say a Samsung mobile, Vivo mobile, Oppo mobile, right? iPhone, these are all the companies. So how the companies does uh, uh, have, there is a little bit difference between the version to version. Samsung mobiles is having the little bit camera quality, 
there is a, some deviation is there, right? In the same way, RP tools, RP is a methodology to implement the RPA, multiple tools are there, multiple companies are there in the market, Pega, Globism, UiPath, Automation Anywhere, right? Nice system. So there is a, almost 60 plus RP tools are available in the market. But top, top three is like, a, so Blue Prism, Automation Anywhere, UiPath. Almost recently, so Microsoft also introduced the, a new RPA tool called Microsoft Power Automate. Power Automate, okay, that is also another tool, RPA tool. Okay, let's go to here. Let's move this one. Okay. We can integrate the RPA with AI. Okay, AI means like a, so uh, something like a uh, intelligent automate that been or artificial intelligence so where uh, for example there is a handwritten document scan document is there native document is there the document is uh, uh, generated by the computer that is a native document native pdf there is a scan pdf also there the scan pdf is not that much clarity or there is a handwritten documents the human can read handwritten because the human to human it will differ the handwriting right so that is a A coming into the picture. And also verification, just see, imagine there is a um, uh, verification in the sense, if you go to the bank and give the check, check and uh, verify, what they will do initially, they will verify what? They will verify signature in the check and signature in the their, their history. Okay, signature, signature verification. So who will do signature verification? human can do signature verification because the signature to signature even though it is the same person the signature to signature a little bit different may come right so these kind of things only rpa cannot do only rpa that's why we can integrate with the ai emails or text or comments so by by reading the comments so from the video from the product you can you can review the products so if you want to purchase a Mobile, so what you do first? You just simply go to the uh, websites and search the search the product and directly click on the buy. No, right? We just scroll down and see the reviews. Is the positive review or negative review? How you can say this review is a positive, this review is a negative? Is there any mark is there? It is a positive or negative? No. Based on the English text, based on the text, you can say. This is a positive review. This is a negative review. Okay. So in that that place, A also coming into the picture, right? If you want to segregate positive reviews into the one sheet, Excel sheet, negative reviews into the another sheet, then what we have to do? We have to integrate A for identifying, predict, predicting uh, positive review or negative review, the given review, and get the review and uh, how much percentage it predicts, right? So then uh, for the next step, like a reading into the Excel, writing into the Excel, or uh, sending the, all the negative reviews into the uh, and mail to the product owner, that is the work doing with the RPA, but finding the whether that is a uh, uh, negative or uh, positive, that is done by the AI. Handwritten documents. Sometimes if you see, whoa, some words, if you see, oh, Sometimes it is a zero also. How you read a properly based on the left side and right side words. If the circle is available in the, between the numbers, how you call? You can call it as a zero. If the circle is available in the uh, uh, alphabets, mid, mid of the alphabets, you can call it as a O, right? Sometimes people write S, that looks like a five. So, here, here, so A coming into the picture. Artificial intelligence will coming into the picture. Because they have a, so, so multiple trainings, so they, they just uh, understand whether it's a O or a zero. So in UA path, we can do that. That also. In UA path. And just uh, log into the orchestrator. It is uh, 
uh, in this. So there is a something like a AS, AI center. Okay, AI center, a document understanding. Okay. Document understanding is like a, so it is also coming on AI, AI. So document understanding means it's like a, so understanding the documents. If you have a thousand documents, just imagine. If you if the documents have the same pattern, we can automate using the RPA itself. Same pattern in the sense, same place invoice number is there, same place invoice date is there, same place total is there. What we can do? We can automate very easily by using the RPA. Just scan entire document. That means read the entire PDF and simply uh, so do the, some string manipulations. And, and uh, find the whether it is invoice number or is what, invoice date is what, what is the total amount, what is the customer name, right? But imagine if you just go to the multiple, just imagine if you just go to the multiple supermarkets, so there is a, like, a, like a multiple supermarkets out there, Reliance, uh, more, right? Uh, okay, Dmart, multiple supermarkets are there. If you go to the supermarket and take the bill at the end, after after purchasing multiple items, is all bills are same format? In all is all bills from the different companies are same format? No, right? No, but if is all bills contains invoice number? Yes. One bill contains one bill contains invoice invoice ID or invoice NO. One bill contains invoice hash. The name also it will differ. They, they will say like a total amount. Some people they will say amount. Amount is there, but the word label is totally different, and the format is different. Some some um, invoices contain an invoice date here, another invoice invoice date in the different place, right? This is a totally a human can understand. The robot cannot cannot understand, right? The human can understand. This is a definitely. This is the invoice date because you see the date format. The format also different. Sometimes MMDD by by DDMM by 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 space a full month name right a day. But as a human, as per your experience from the childhood, you can understand it is a date. It is invoice date when we purchased on that date and time. But what about the robot? Because it is not stable. In that point, we can use the AI, artificial intelligence. Combine that into the, that, that's the document understand. Understanding the documents by, by just uh, uh, passing the some samples, it can, it can understand, it will predict, this is the invoice number, this is the invoice date, this is the amount, right? Okay, A center. A center, that's a, that's a combination of the A and RP also, we can, it is a possible. In a center, you have a multiple. For example, if I click. There is a uh, if you see the data sets. See here. ML packages are there. So out of box packages, input packages, out of box packages. There's a document understanding, image analysis, language analysis. Sometimes the language, it, you have to predict the language. So you don't know whether the la so sometimes uh, um, two languages, so Telugu and Kannada, little bit that Lippi is the same. Okay. So if the person does not know about how the, how the Telugu looks like, does not know how the Kannada looks like, how can he predict? What this language is Canada, right? A Telugu. Language analysis is there. If in the language analysis, language uh, classification, multiple languages so classification is there. Okay. So multiple AI uh, tools are there. So suppose image analysis. Again, image moderation is there. Signature verification. Are you able to see? Signature verification. So it will just Compare the signature, signature comparison is there, signature verification is there, right? So that's where I'm, I'm saying that. So we can automate, uh, even though not not like a, so it's a, it's a people like a, so it's not possible because a human is 
compulsory required to verify the uh, 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 signature. Then this kind of things also the barcoding, right? The logos identify the low logo. So if this logo is a uh, this company logo, handwritten documents. This can we can automate. So and why UI path we have to learn? Why UI path? Because UI path has a lot of features, and recently they launched the UI path studio in the web also, so they can create a automation from the web itself. So no need to install anything. Recently, very recently they launched that is a preview version only. So once they uh, they didn't release the stable version yet. Once everything is good, so they will release the stable version later. But so there is a apps, there is a multiple uh, things are there, and also UI path uh, having the community edition free. UI path has community edition free. Suppose, for example, if we go to the home uh, into the orchestrator, you have a community edition. See, here you can download the studio and uh, uh, apply so uh, you can automate multiple things so there is a studio so where you can download the community edition there is a two types of versions community and enterprise enterprise is a licensed version community is a, a free version for the public okay, learners researchers students who, who want to you know with new things in the using the ui path they can they can directly use the community edition and also community edition has a lot of features. The only difference is like a community edition like a so it has a limited robots, but enterprise edition. So you as you purchase, you have to purchase the robot. So I know I need the five robots. You have to charge the uh, you have to pay the amount for the five robots. OK, robot wise price is different. Orchestra price is different. Studio price is different, right? That is coming under the price. So if you purchase the enterprise license, but studio, you can just uh, for the community, you can download the studio and uh, automate the multiple tasks which you are doing or uh, which you can just think like we can automate these kind of tasks every day to, to save a lot of time. And uh, not only that, so there is a C here. There are all, these are all the applications. So we can, apart from these also, a lot of applications are there. Chart bots are there. So so usually chart bots, what, what they, they will do? The chart bot can just identify the query which is given by the user in the chart window. And it will respond the text based on the KB articles, knowledge based articles. So we just interacted with the multiple chart bots, right? So what we do, we just type some question. It will give the answer based uh, instead of human. Earlier humans will do, but now chart bots is doing. What they what the bot do, uh, chatbot will do? Chatbot will give the information, and it can understand what we are asking, and it will ask some questions like, so what is your ID? What is your uh, where you want to go? Right. So what is your city? So these kind of things it will ask, and we are also providing the answers, and based on the English text, it will it will predict and it will just give the information. But why chatbot comes into the RPA UI path? Because we can uh, we can combine the chart bot and UI path. It is not only giving the information, it will do some work for you. Understand? Normal chart bots will just give the information based on the your inputs. But if you combine that chart bot with UI path, you can do beyond the chart bots. Like a, if you just pass the information like this, it will open the application at the end. Search your details and give the information information or do something. Okay. For example, I want to approve the list. So I just imagine I am the manager. So uh, someone from my team so requested a leave. What I have to do? What I have to do? I have to open the website, the company web portal, leave portal, log into the leave portal, and select that person up uh, that that leave request and click on the approve button. It is a task. It is not giving the information or uh, finding the information. It is a task, a human task. For example, if I have a chart bot, will do the same thing on behalf of me, right? So I will tell to the chart bot in the, from the mobile, just reject this leave or approve this leave to this person. Then immediately chart bot will go back and log into the admin portal and search for that request and click on the 
a reject button. Click on the approve button. As per the results, it will just return it back. So we approved this request. We, are, we rejected this, this request. I'm just saying that a, a, a simple example. Okay, so we can do many things with the chatbots. There is an action center. These are all the uh, multiple things, action center, apps. Okay, so they give the apps recently. You have the apps creating the websites to interact with the robots without code. Right, you can, you can, you can interact with them multiple things. So UiPath is evolving. So having the multiple, having the multiple products. So day by day they are increasing the products. Let me just show some apps if the apps are available in my account. We just uh, uh, giving the awareness as how the apps looks like. So these are websites. So you just simply drag and drop on arranging the logic and just call the robots at the back end. Uh, if, it, if, if the user pass the information. Uh, so these are all the little bit, uh, few apps as I done. So for testing. Uh, See, this is the app. So this is a website. Just so I, I didn't write any code. So okay, so it's a just drag and drop and arranging the logic. Okay, so you can simply move here. So automatically the hovers will calculate. And if you submit the in the background, the robot will uh, take the information and uh, fill the Excel. Okay, so to to just uh, create a front end apps provided. Okay, decently. So the front end. Suppose for example, if I want to change the logic, so the, the language you can just change the logic. Uh, so, sorry, language if they want to understand, right? So the language. So to, to do this kind of business logic also, I didn't write any code. It is just simply drag and drop and very less times so we can just build a, an, an awesome apps. So if you click on this button, submit button, the, the row, this app will send the uh, information to the robot. The robot will just uh, do the work like I so it may be a, it may enter the details into the database it may enter into the data details to the excel it may just uh, send an email these are apps so what here apps are there so attended boards unattended boards data services a center visa right orchestrator many things are there okay what are the salaries if we learn the ui paths so how much salary we will get uh, let's uh, Google it. Okay. RPA developer. So, so see, I am just saying the developer in RPA world. There's only the there's not only the developer role. There's developer, senior developer, lead developer, and uh, solution architect, business analyst, right? Uh, project manager, infrastructure engineer. There is a multiple role, support engineer. In RPA world, there is a multiple jobs are uh, created. So once the RPA come into the market and the, into the world, they, it creates a lot of jobs. People think like yes, it will remove the jobs. That is a wrong statement. Okay, it will create a jobs, multiple jobs. Okay, salary in India. See there, it is mentioning the like yes, so 4.4 lakhs to 24 lakhs per annum. I'm saying beyond that also. I, I I just said I, I saw many people salaries, so it's a beyond that also. They are saying that between average salaries for the developers only. If you are senior developer, if you are uh, lead developer, or if you are solution architect in RPA, so just think that 30 lakhs, 40 lakhs per annum. It is in India. It's not in different country, right? It is in India. If you go to the uh, uh, on site. On site, there is a multiple opportunities are there. So that is a this is also another app I created. Okay, so that is the salaries. So decent salaries they will give. And coming to the UI path, almost we have a 
in 32 11 30 yeah so we are, we just start our work so you have path uh, so what is a uh, uh, how can we automate the things these things and all okay so uipath path has a uh, mainly three components so one is a ui path studio where you can develop the bot okay normally if you see the dot net there is a visible studio in java i don't know now what they are using but earlier so they use eclipse to write the code to build the programs to build the softwares like that if you want to create a robot or develop the robots build the robots this is a place your path studio where you are building the actual robots if you just install after installing you will just type the ua path ua path studio is there and the next thing is robots ua path robot or you can call it just ua path assistant okay. whatever you build in the ua path studio who will understand the robot can understand okay so whatever you, you just design the a flow like okay, so open the browser click here type here log out the browser right these things and all you are just writing uh, designing the a flow workflow a robot will do at the end so robot is an ex you sit into the, your computer and once you run from the uh, wherever that means you can run from the studio you can run from the assistant you can run from the orchestrator you can schedule the robots so from wherever you would trigger the process a, a bot at the end the robot will do the robot is an ex you sit into the, your computer the robot will understand what you design and it will just do the work, do the task, how you design, right? An orchestrator, that another thing is like an orchestrator. Orchestrator is like, a, so that's what we just uh, see here is orchestrator. Orchestrator contains uh, the many things like, a, so keeping the credentials, sometimes the credentials of any application so you you, you should not uh, keep it the a local text file local excel so there is assets globally you can create a assets asset means a, a variable global variable you are keeping into the uh, cloud okay so why we have to keep in the cloud so once you deploy the robot once you develop the robot what is the next step once you develop the robot what is the next step you are just uh, deploying into the a production system you are utilizing that robot so the robot is doing the work daily after after just maybe the opening the url and log into the url based on the credentials username and password and doing some work just imagine after six months the url may change right the url may change or the credentials may change right the reset password so if you change the password, normally what we are doing so is a regular basis. If you just use the internet banking or any any things, right? So internet banking, so what they will do? They will ask you to change the password in certain period, right? After certain period. You know, so you change the password. Tomorrow onwards, which password you use? You use the old password or new password? You use the new password. You have to just... Uh, remember that password. Sometimes what we, we will do, we mistakenly type the old password as habituated, right? So it is saying that's wrong password, then just uh, remembering that new password and typing the new password. You design a bot to log into your account. Just imagine every, every month first, you are getting a salary. Just imagine. You are doing a single task. What 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 the task? Every day, every month, first you are getting that salary into your account. First or second, you are spending almost uh, ten to fifteen, uh, fifteen or twenty minutes, twenty minutes time to just transfer the money to the multiple expenses like a rent, EMI, right? EMI or whatever what else. Uh, sending to a specific uh, uh, letter, send send money to the parents. Okay, send money to the parents and uh, home loan. Multiple things. You are just simply click, select the person, transfer, transfer. You think I want to automate this task? Every 
second of the month, the robot will wake up and re robot. I, I, I will schedule the robot for every month second, second date. Okay. So you created the robot and schedule the second date. So what the robot will do? Robot will open the website. Which website? The back back website. Log into the website by passing the credentials which you configured. Right? You configured the customer ID and password. This things and all. It will log into the uh, uh, website and go to the trans transactions or transfer money. Whatever you mentioned every month, see this is the account. You had to transfer this much amount every month. This is a rent. So the owner account. This is the amount you had to transfer, right? You just uh, deploy like a, so. You just store these values in the Excel. The robot will read one by one and do the actually the work. Suddenly, after six month, the password is changed. You change the password. Will the robot knows you change the password? Just tell me so whether the robot failed or success. Seventh month or after six months. It will fail because it will fail because what you just just configure the, the password for the robot is a old password. And so you just change the password recently. You didn't update the new password into the configuration. So just imagine if you have a, a system, a, a, a PC available, run 24 by 7. You you deployed the robot in that mission. Even though if you lock the system, it will work. See if you if you just power off, it won't work. Okay. If you just lock the system, the unattended bots will run in the background. In the background, the, the works will do. The robot will just open the websites, this, whatever the things it will do. And if you lock the system also, okay, just imagine that the, the system or VM, which one you take in, that is working fine. But if you keep the uh, credentials inside the system in one text file, what you have to do? You have to log into that system and change the password, open the text file and change the password, or text file or Excel, anything, okay? If you keep the your credentials into the uh, 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 same system where the robot is running. The one thing is uh, you have to log into the system. That is the one one issue. The second thing is like so. If someone is having the access to the system, they may uh, uh, hack. The, uh, they may they may see your passwords and they may misuse your credentials. Security is the second thing, right? That's why so we can just create the assets. So in the cloud, the robot will connect to the cloud orchestrator. See, that's a, that's what here. The robot will connect to the orchestrator for few things. Few things like so uh, getting the URLs, getting the credentials from so every time the robot is not referring local, the robot is referring the cloud orchestrator for username and password. Just see here, type is like a so Boolean text and credential is there. Just pass the username and Type the password. It is encrypted. It is a very secure. Okay, so every time the robot is uh, uh, getting the values from the orchestrator. So what you have to do? You don't need to touch the robot uh, robot system. If the password is changed, you just come to the orchestrator and change password here. From that time onwards, the robot will use a new password. That is a one advantage. Another one is the security. It will encrypt everything so so that you are not keeping passwords anywhere uh, as a plain text. So this is the assets, not only the assets, not only assets, there is a lot of things are there. If the queues are there, the queues is like so multiple people has to run uh, parallelly, right? So multiple multiple uh, robots has to run parallelly. Just imagine uh, there is a Every day, every day, uh, you, you are getting the uh, 10,000 items. One robot is able to do 10,000 items per day. Just see mass. Okay. So tomorrow, your business is grown well, and the, you are getting the more than 10,000 per day requests. More than 10,000, almost 20,000 or 50,000. It is increasing, but 
the robot can able to do only 10,000. Just imagine this is an example. Don't take it as a uh, what robot. So only take 10,000. Okay. It's a based on the one simple example I'm saying. Okay. The robot is handling the one robot is handling the 10,000 records for that particular request or our process. So tomorrow, if it is a huge, what we have to do, we can create another robot. You, you, you don't need to develop the another robot. You just copy paste another robot into the another machine. Copy paste into the another machine. The process from the orchestrator, if you have a 10 robots, you can just, it's like a human. Just imagine the robot is like a human. Okay, so five people are there. Orchestrator will monitor all the robots, all five robots. So you can schedule like, so which one is a free? Just assign the task to that particular robot. Okay. That facility is also there. If which robot is free, just assign the robot, assign the task. Okay. Or, so assign the task to the, this, this particular four robots. Okay. Parallelly, give one item to this one, second item to this one, third item to this, third one, the fourth item to fourth one. Okay. So within this four, if anyone has completed the task, again, give the another item to here, right? This is like, so you have to imagine if I call it as a robot, it is a human. So because a robot can do one, uh, one work one at a time, at a time, okay? Only the UI automation. There is a two types of automation. Again, background automation, foreground automation. Foreground means you're opening the applications, you're using the mouse, you're using the keyboard, you're typing something. While the robot is doing typing something, if I just release the mouse or uh, disturb the mouse, what will happen? If the robot want to click on some some button at the same time, if I uh, disturb the mouse, it won't click. It won't click. That is a foreground not automation. The background automation is interacting with the PDFs, interacting with the Excels, interacting with the emails. So database, so APIs, multiple things it will interact. But while it is interacting, you can do your work in the same system. There's no problem because the robot is working in the background and also. Not only that, there is another feature. You can run multiple works parallelly with the same robot if that is a background process, not foreground process. Okay, For, not foreground process. And also, they just introduced the picture in picture also. Recently, they no, they they introduced a picture in picture also. So if you run the work in the picture in picture. It will run in the another system. Suppose, for example, if I just, uh, um, just let us let us create a, a, a small robot. Okay? We'll we'll just go to the hello world uh, thing. Before that, so where we are developing the robots, where uh, where the execution is basically uh, UFS robot is an execution engine. Orchestrator is like so orchestrating the all the things like so storage buckets, queues, assets, and uh, uh, triggers as so you can trigger the <coughs> you can trigger the robots. So there is a two types of triggers: time trigger and queue trigger. So you can just schedule the robots every one hour, every one hour, or every four hours. So uh, daily, daily, this much amount. weekly. So only I want to run the Saturday and Sunday. So where the systems are very free, applications are uh, very free. So when you want to run, okay, monthly. So every second month. So every every two months I have to run. But every two months, uh, so Monday and Friday, I have to run, right? So this is a scheduler. You can schedule, right? These are all the things where, where we are just keeping this so, uh, scheduling, triggering, monitoring in the orchestrator. You can see here, orchestrator, right? Okay, in the home. So you can see the, how many queues are there, how the robots are executing, which robot is busy. Got it? Which robot is busy? If you see the bots are the bots are the so bot having this one, the bots having the oh, which missions are there. Okay, so that is our orchestrator. So how many how many components are there in the UI path? Mainly three components. One is the studio, robot, orchestrator. So let us see the hello world. Once you install the robot, so oh, install the UI path studio. So to install the UI path studio, just log into the uh, cloud.uipath.com or platform.uipath.com. And uh, so in the home, you can say you can have a simply download studio. Click on the download studio. So automatically it will download the some MSI file. Just click on the MSI, double, double click on the MS file. Okay. You just log in with your Gmail account or Microsoft account. Okay. 
So once you install, you just simply you will get the uh, so. Here, these two are available in your computer. Once you install the UI path, this is a totally cloud. UI path architecture is a cloud URL. Okay, so this also you can get get by using the the community URL is like a start UI path dot com. Navigate to the cloud dot UI path dot com and install the UI path studio into the your machine. Okay. Now let us see a uh, hello world. So in the UI path studio, so once you open the studio, so you have a new projects, new templates are there. These are all the old recent projects and here is our tabs and in the bottom you can see the version and there is a multiple tools are available. Templates are available. Teams is connecting the version controls so with multiple employees are working in the same project so you can. Collaborate. There is a multiple extensions are there. If you want to interact with Chrome, so you have to install the extension. Then only to identify the elements in the Chrome's so like that. There is a multiple Java applications, so Edge applications, Chrome applications. So normally, many applications it will identify automatically. But these things, so the the, the applications which developed on the Java, developed on Silver Silverlight, right? So you can install this kind of uh, extension extensions. Okay, so let us see start. Create a process. There is again process library test automation template is there. So process library, these these two are the main things, and this is the main thing. Like so, process creating the blank plain process. Uh, okay, so to automate the uh, a specific task, you are using the process. And library is like a so reusable component. So suppose, for example, multiple teams are working in the same type of thing, and they are also developing the same kind of development. Then you can create a one reusable component like a log into the Facebook, log into the log out from the Facebook. These kind of things leave library. You just reuse the others can reuse instead of rebuilding the same code. Okay, let us create a demo on demo one. Okay. Uh, you can pass the uh, the the URL where you want to store the application the the project. And description also you can give. So after after that also you can give. So if you see the projects in the project panel, so in the project panel there's a settings. Uh, if you want to give the demo name of the uh, if you want to change the name description, you can change after creating also. So here, so we have a suppose for example in the there is a, it is a studio. The studio contains the panels like a project panel, snippets panel, activities panel, output panel, variables panel. Arguments panel, imports panel. You can see here in in the right side. If you see the properties panel, these are all the things are there available. And um, this is the top level is the ribbon. The design ribbon is there. Debug ribbon is there. Ribbon is there. Design ribbon contains again uh, screen scrapping, data scrapping. Okay, UI explorer, right? So multiple things are there. So and also this is activities panel. So it contains the activity. So whatever you are doing, the simple task. Done by the user is called activity. A simple task done by the user is called activity means. What is that? If you click on the somewhere, there is a click activity. If you just double click, double click activity. If you just mouse over, mouse over activity is there. See here, hover, hover is there, hover activity, okay. mouse hover. Okay, click activity is there. So all all activities are available here. So whatever the actions are there, so all actions are available here. So Read CSV. I want read CSV. Read CSV activity is there. So write CSV. Write CSV activity is there, right? So okay. So append range Excel activities are there. Excel. If you want to write the mail, mail activities are there. So multiple mail activities, sending mail, retrieving the mail, save mail, download attachments, move mail from one folder to another folder, Gmail. So multiple things are there. Okay. So if you want to uh, now, for example, PDF. If you want to run the PDF, so PDF activity is not available, right? So whatever not available, you have to install. Suppose, for example, in your mobile, if you don't have a, any specific app, what you'll do? For example, I want to book a Ola cab. I don't have a Ola app in my system. So how, how can I utilize their service, Ola service? By just installing the Ola app into my system, my mobile, I can utilize their service to install the whole app where, where i have to go it's android mobile so android play store right 
in the same way see pdf activities are not there but i have to use the pdf in my project what i have to do so if you just type the pdf it is not showing any activities just go to the manage packages it's like a same thing okay so i'm just selecting the official official means so the packages is built using the uipod itself just type the pdf Something. No package is found. So basically, the packages will found here, and we have to install the packages. So let us see what will be the problem. This is not working. Yeah, see here, PDF activity is okay. Mark code, so mark code, mark code are uh word documents so if you want to interact the words so you have your ms word app packages so whatever is not available so you just simply uh click here and uh, select the version and download the install the package so you are not installing it to the uipath studio you are just installing this package to the specific to the project only okay understand because so the pdf activities we are using this project not in other projects why we need to install the packages centrally, right? It is not studio level, it is a just project level. So now if you just type the PDF, so you're getting the PDF activities like so read PDF text, read PDF with those here, join PDF files, right? So like that, so whatever the things are not available here, so it, you can just simply install, okay? Okay, so now, Let's uh, do the hello world. So hello world uh, project. So I'm just using the message box to just uh, say hello world. And, uh, so once we just drag, see everything is a drag and drag and drop and pass the information which they want, which it want. Okay. So suppose check activity check, just check, and uh, you just mentioned so way to check, way to check the checkbox or radio buttons. Okay. Type the activity and uh, here, so this act, each activity has a properties. So these are all the properties panels. Suppose, for example, if you see here activities, so just check the properties panel. If I select this, properties are changing, right? Properties are changing. Like a object has a properties, right? Object has a properties. So laptop has a properties like, so what is a RAM? What is a uh, SDD? Uh, okay, so HDD size and what is a screen size? How much price? Which company? These are the properties. Okay, so property has a value. So like that's the property here. The property has a value. So we give the value for the text property. Hello world. Okay. You can change here or there. Okay. And also you can see automatically close after these many seconds. Suppose, for example, uh, hours, minutes, seconds. So I'm just giving the after five seconds, it will just close. Got it? So each activity act from the activities panel, we have to drag the activities and uh, arranging the logic. And uh, from the properties panel, so you have to just uh, change the properties of the activity as per your need. If any package, any pro uh, activities are not available in the activities panel, what we have to do? Go to the manage packages and search for the package and install that package. All the available pa uh, activities under that package are available in the activities plan. So let us here save and you can just simply run file or debug. So or run, run, run means it will run from the main dot Okay. Uh, each project, if you see the main or uh, sorry, if you see the C language, Java language, anything. So there is a main is there, like a main. That is a starting point to run the project. Right? So here also main dot XAM is there. So people, uh, this this file sort of start extension is like it's a XA extensionable uh, XAML kind of things. Okay. This is a project and there's a folders and files. If you want to add the another another uh, projects, you can under workflow under this project, you can just use login to Facebook. So once you add the login to Facebook is in the project panels, you can the project panel, you can see this, this is a workflow. This is a workflow. Okay. 
So, but so this is a bold color. This is a normal color, right? That means so this is a main workflow. If you just make this as a main, so just right click on the set as a main. So the once you click on the run, not run file, okay, run, it will start from the whatever the main file is there from that. Just making this as a main. Where is that? Uh, uh, set as a main. Okay, here. Set as a main is disabled. Disable entry point. Set as a main. Okay. This is an entry point. Basically, this a main is entry point. Okay. So you have to just uh, uh, and you can call this workflow so in the main. So like that, just drag and drop. How you are drag and dropping the workflows uh, activities in the same way. You can just drag and drop and uh, arranging the logic. So instead of writing the entire code in the single file, writing the code in the modular approach. So opening the application in the work, one workflow, closing the applications in another workflow. Uh, different different workflows you are creating pieces you created and consolidate that pieces into the main. So that's the flow you are designing. Run file will run only the file which you open and if you just click on the run, so it will run from the a starting point. See the hello world message box came and it will van, it will just disappear after five seconds because we get the five seconds here. Got it. So this is a hello world. So what we learned from this studio, so we can just learn. So how, how can we add, how, how to run? How to debug? Uh, how to debug? We just click on the debug, so it will just debug. It won't uh, close the studio, and it will just understand which is uh, running. See here, so the the orange symbol is like a uh, this this project is running. So this item is running. Okay, so green green tick mark means it will success successfully ran this. Good. Okay, so and containers, there's a multiple containers and there's containers means like so normal containers. So what we are seeing outside, uh, it contains something and keep it is a very easy to carry whole thing from one place to another place. Like so from these containers, you are just uh, moving the container from ship to uh, okay, rail or ship to something, something like a, uh, okay, so lorry, right? So the transportations, right? So like that, so we have a multiple containers. So con it contains something. Containers like a so sequence, flowchart, and set missions. Sequence is like a so to to use a sequential process. So after this step, we are using these steps. After this, this this is a sequence. It, it will not go back again. Okay, okay. So that, that's a sequence. So after opening the application browser, type the log, click on the login button, type the login username, type the password. This is a sequential process. Flowchart is mainly used to so conditional based kind of things like this. you can just revert back and there's a connection right so suppose for example if you see here flow chart basically this is a sequence if you see here this is a sequence if you add the any activities it is a sequential based sequence it is a sequence okay so one after this this will run this will run like that okay so if you just use the flow chart flow chart just drag and drop the flow chart here. So within the flow chart, if you just expand this flow chart, so here is a starting node. And again, so if you, you can just simply connect these nodes and connect the starting node and ending node, right? Connect these. If you mouse over, so connect this again back. Okay, you can do like this. Okay, you can do so. Or connecting this one to the here itself, right? There is a starting node, there is a connections, and also a flow decision, also flow decision, also there. The flow decision is there, connecting this to the decision. And in, in this decision, you have a uh, two workflow. So, two sides is true or false. Suppose this true or false will connect here, true will connect here, right? Understand? So, the, again, the switch is also there. Flow switch. Normal switch is there, flow switch is there. So switch case, normally you, you, you know that, right? So in the C language, switch cases, C, if conditions, decision making, this things. So here, this is a uh, starting point. There is a, there is a nodes like this, almost uh, each time, each, each side, three nodes are there. So you can just uh, apply the switch, like a, if it's a red color, I'll go here. If it's a green color, I'll go here. So normal switch, switch only, okay. Here, the default, we connect, this is a zero. 
zero means uh, so that means zero means so you have to change the name okay suppose if it's a string so you can change the name to the multiple things like a uh, yeah here okay yeah, so if it's a success so here so you can just use a bangalore if there's a if it's a if the value which is there in the switch so here it's a bangalore it will go here uh or uh with the chennai so it will go here right so like this it will just use the flowchart that is the container flowchart and uh, statement uh, that means so sequence so uh, flowchart can as a if your requirement has a multiple conditions then go for the flowchart so or it is not matter you can you can keep the flowchart inside the sequence is sequence inside the flowchart vice versa same mission is uh, used to, to advance level uh, uh, kind of things like so for example if you just use this workflow okay it has a state so it's a for, for complex projects we are using the state mission container where it has a state so it's the initialization so to complete all the process you have a stages right stages it's a, it's a onboarding process asset allocation process learning process right okay like that there is a stages so here also there is a stages these are it is a one state initialization state once it is a success it will go here so once it's a failure it will go here get transaction state each state has a day uh, we are just creating the state and name it as a so some meaningful name and uh, for that particular purpose so within the state if you go to the state again you are, you are having the code so you just write the code okay there is a state mission state mission mainly used for the a complex projects uh, so and it has a proper state wise thing that's it and uh, let us do a small application so i'm just uh, uh, going with the, an application from the broad cni for cni uh, we will just use the uh, server availability uh, let's just create a one folder sorry demo project something like that okay Okay, so first, before going to this uh, server availability, what is exactly the issue? The issue is like, okay, so you have a server names, username and password is there. Okay, username and password is there, server name is there. So if we click on the server, st start server or uh, show server, so it will just show the, uh, whether the server started or not. So server is available or not, okay. Let us see, so just download, I'm just downloading the Excel, input Excel from here. Uh, demo project and here is the input input.xlsx so just open the input.xlsx so what all things are there what the robot has to do robot has to check uh, see here user id this is the user id let's imagine here the user id is this one password is this one just for testing and uh, this is the combination yes yes Yes, you see here, you see the code hyphen, the code in the sense server code hyphen IP address. IP address is also now here, the IP address is in the dots separation, and here the IP address is in the uh, this separation, so under the hyphen separation. Okay, yeah, we, we selected this one only. Once the start the server, so, so what is the server it is giving? So the server is an offline, just take the server uh, status and update here. Got it. So the robot has to they, they just imagine the human is doing this one son sending to the uh, specific person but the robot is doing this one uh, if every one hour we have to check whether the, the status of each and every uh, server so by just uh, simply passing the username and password and uh, select the server uh, ip address check the status in the website and update the status in the, the fifth column okay let us see how we can do this this uh, uh, task i'm just taking the blank process okay so while it is running so just uh, note down the note down the points so what are the, what are all the sub tasks we have to do okay just removing entire thing yeah see here uh, First thing what we have to do, okay, so the first thing what we have to do. 
Just imagine we already downloaded the Excel, so we have Excel, okay? First thing is, read Excel. And second, loop each row from Excel data table. Okay, so Excel is a, looks like a data table. So data table is an object in the C-Shop.net. So UiPath is built in the C-Shop.net in the background. We can use uh, some logic in the, of the C-Shop.net. So loop each and every record from the uh, data table. And uh, so once we loop, what is the next step? Uh, open server availability application from what's the NA website. Okay. So the one thing you can do, so like is directly open the bots DNA website and just simply click on this one. That is the one way. And anyway, URL, we have a strong URL. So just uh, take that URL and uh, open directly this server URL. Server availability. Okay. Server availability. So then, then input user ID, username, password, and uh, server name. And before that, so just prepare the uh, prepare server based on what is the two columns, right? These two columns, IP and status. So based on these two columns, right? Because so whatever the server we have to select is different format. Okay, here we have a a code hyphen, see code hyphen. And the IP address having the dots here. So, uh, okay, so now we have to replace the dots with the hyphens. So, we have to generate that one. So, then uh, uh, after that, passing this uh, one by one, we'll write, okay. Six input password, seven. Each and every simple task is some action, right? Uh, select IP. Uh, server from the drop down list. Server drop list. So, see, here is it is typing. Here also it is typing. Here it is a selection, selecting. It's not typing, right? And then what we have to do is the next step. So, eight, click on start server. Next, after clicking, what we have to do? Get the status from web that is a server availability. So once we click on this server, so what will happen? So here we got the one status, whether it's offline or online, right? Unavailable, anything. So then, so what we have to do? So get the information. So get status from the website. Then what is the next thing? Next step. So update into e column for the same record in the Excel, right? In the Excel, input Excel. Input Excel. Okay. What is the eleventh step? Eleventh step is almost eleventh uh, uh, step. Uh, close server availability. Okay. So website. So we done with the same single uh, record, right? So we close the or, or thing. So that third step is like a repeat the same process from step 3 to step 11 for all records in input.xlsx. Do you understand the requirement? This is a requirement. So reading the Excel, looping each and every record from that, and for each record, we have to uh, apply these steps like so opening the server application, type the username and password, preparing the server, uh, server IP address, and select the IP address and click on the server, get the status and update the status in the corresponding call. Okay, got it. So let us do this one, uh, this task. So for here, what we can do, we can just, uh, uh, you can do anything, but I'm just using the flowchart and expand this one. So I'm just uh, giving the some steps. Otherwise, just to remove this. Okay, here we'll name this as the okay, server availability something server status update okay so server status update so what we can do the steps is like a so 
load data. Yes, I'm just uh, creating the a, a sequences load data. And here. Loop data and update loop data and update. That's it. Okay, so two things. Okay, load data. So to load the data from the Excel. So where is Excel? The Excel is uh, in which folder? This is a folder, right? So I'm just copying this Excel path by just pressing the shift and right click by just pressing the shift and right click. You can get the option called copy as a path. Copy as a path. You can copy this. This copy as a path will give the once you I just paste here, paste here. So this is a path with the double quotes it will give. OK, so what we will do? So we'll just create a variable. So, so create a variable space, keeping the that particular. Path into the here, so path into here. So or you can just simply go to the uh, orchestrator assets and create a uh, asset also. So let's create a variable for now. Create a variable. Name, give the name of the variable and what is the type of the variable? So <clears throat> you all well known about the variables in the C, C language, C, C++ language, the variable has the rules, right? So it, ha it should start with the alphabets. It should not start with the numbers. It should not contain the spaces. Uh, OK, so it should not contain the special characters expect, except the underscore. These things and also so if it's, if I try to create a variable like it's having the space or something like this, it won't tell you. Okay? Immediately throw error. Okay? So we have to give the proper name. So each variable contains a, a data type. So it, it has a, these are all the data types. Not only these data types, there is a lot of data. All the data types which supports a .NET will support here. So bool in 32 string object data table array RF array of something array of integer like this. If you want more data types like a so cat double right. So time span, these are all not there, right? So suppose, for example, so browse the types from here. This is a window. Suppose, for example, system dot char character, right? So you can character data types. So you can just click on OK. So it, this character data type will come. So what I'm saying is here the variables. So you can browse any type of variable from the browser. So very, uh, the whole window. Which supports all dot net. Uh, data types, OK, so now. As it is a strings, I'm just keeping the string and default value. You can just give the default value like this default value. Or you can just simply use the assign operator. Creating the variable, not passing the value, just saying drag the assign operator. So what is the variable we created? Input Excel, right? Type input automatically it will give the integer sense. Understand? So it's it's a follow the dotted rules. So it will give the Intel sense. So if you don't find the Intel sense, just press the a, a shortcut key like a control space. What is the shortcut key? Press control and click the space. So just put, keep the cursor here. Press control space. It will give the pop up. Okay, it will help you. So once it is selected, just press enter. It automatically select uh, uh, paste the value which is selected. Okay, now this is the value. Which we are assigning, which we didn't assign in the default, which we are assigning separately. Okay. Once we assign, what's the lead, read the data? So, which to read the data, there is a read range activity. There's a two read ranges activities are there. See here, UiPath provides two types, two types of activities to interact with the Excel. Um, are you all listening? So, please, please listen carefully. So, here, Excel automation, okay. So UA path provide provided two types of activities, two different activities to do the same kind of work. OK, two different activities no, uh, is not doing the different type of work. So here I type the read range. You can see that two read range activities doing the same work, but why they provided two read ranges? OK. One we are getting from the UA path and dot Excel or actually SAP integration Excel under Excel. OK, one way I just system file and workbook. OK, two things. One is the workbook activities, the below one, workbook activities, and the one is the Excel activities. If it, not only the read range, if you take the right, right range, you can see the two types of activities, right range. OK, append range. You see the append range, two append ranges. Right? Why they provided two, two, two activities to do the same kind of work? 
under two different uh, roots. What is the two different things? One is a Excel activities. Another one is a workbook activities. See, the main difference is if you use the workbook activities, workbook activities, you no need MS Office software installed into your system. Your system in the way the robot is executing. Because the MS Office software is again licensed version, right? They have to purchase the license for just simply doing a small data added into the Excel or retrieving the data from the Excel. So why, why they are just spending a, a license, separate uh, license, purchase separate license for the MS Office for that particular robot mission. Okay? So if you use a workbook activities, and no need to install any MS of software. So if the MS of software, MS Excel software is installed, no problem. If it's not installed also, it will work uh, if you use the workbook activities. This is opposite, Excel is the opposite, okay? If you use the app integration Excel activities, the first one, okay? That means here, this one, okay? In this type of activities under this, you should, install the I mean so the software should be available in that system that is the first difference the second difference if you want to apply the formulas excel has a formulas right <laughs> multiple formulas if you want to apply the formulas so you can apply the formulas very easily by using the excel activities not the workbook activities and the excel activities can read dot xlsm dot xlsb different extensions not normally xlsx excel s okay dot csv multiple things it will read if you use excel activities but workbook activities it will just use a uh, dot xlsx activities only okay. so these are all the difference and not only that there is a many type of activities are there in the excel if you see here just go to the excel integrations Excel, see here. So close the book, book copy sheet, and uh, see here. So read cell, read cell formula. Okay, get cell color. Sometimes the Excel has a colors. So based on the color, you have to decide. So by as a human, if you see the red color, that means so in the in the, in the uh, trading or any uh, thing, so any any numbers, so if you see the red color of the cell, that means it's a like so a, a low, so green is a high, a, a different kind of uh, measurements are there, right? So if you want to decide your work based on the a cell color on that particular task, then you can use a get cell color, or you, if you want to set the color, you can set the range color also, you, you can set the colors also. So there's a multiple, not only that, so if you see the data table, uh, Excel, Excel processing, and the see copy paste stage executing the macros in Excel. There is a macros executing the macros, like invoke the VPA code. Multiple things are available in the Excel activities. So if you see the, the system, system file, under file, uh, uh, see under file, you have a append uh, file, under file workbook. Workflow, this is a workflow, okay. There's a workbook, right? Um, system. System. is a file, okay. Uh, the file. Let's type the read range. You see the system file workbook under that. You have a read range, so workbook, okay. Um, System file workbook workbook is not here, but it is showing uh, the under systems. Okay. Somewhere it is showing. Okay. So suppose for example, a read cell activity, the read cell activity is there here. Okay. These are all the Excel activities. See here read cell, read cell formula, so read range. Read row, these things are all available, right? So what is our steps? So our steps first is a read Excel. 
to read the data from the Excel. So you have to use a read range activity. Yeah, read range activity. I'm just using the workbook activities. And also, I have one more a, a, a difference. So important difference between the this work workbook activities and Excel activities is like a, uh, for example, just imagine one Excel you use. Suppose, for example, this is an Excel I, I use, and I open the Excel. I forgot to close the Excel. But so, for example, I, I forgot to close Excel now 11.30. Okay, I, I just leave task is, but 12 o'clock we schedule the board. The board is using the same Excel. What will happen if I use the work categories? It will throw error, okay? Normally, this error you are seeing regularly. If you open one file using the file, if you are trying to delete the file from the folder, what it will say? It will say it is open. Suppose, for example, here I'm just trying to delete this one. What it is saying? The action cannot be completed because the file is open in Excel, right? This is a this is an issue will come if you use the workbook activities. Okay, the human or other robot is using the same Excel opened the Excel and uh, at the same time the robot is also trying to access the same Excel. OK, it will throw the exception like the other processes using the same Excel unable to open the Excel. OK, but the beauty of uh, uh, using the Excel activities is like a even though the file is opened. By someone or some process. The, the, the robot will work if, if you use the Excel activities, it won't throw any error. So even though if you open the Excel, it will work. If you do not open the Excel, it will work. So it will access the Excel. Uh, OK, so we don't we don't uh, throw in the exceptions. You know, it's an opening. OK, let's drag the Excel activity range activities. OK, and browse the uh, so the file path. So we have to so as I said, the activity we have to drag and drop and pass the inputs and get the outputs. That's it. So read range activity under workbook I gave. OK, so so if you just use the read, read cell read range activity from the Excel, the, the one field it is missing the file name. OK, the another difference between these two is like a so workbook activities as independent. You can just drag and drop past the file path and use it. But Excel activities is a depending on the Excel application scope. If you want to use any activity under the Excel, you have to use Excel application scope. Because Excel application scope contains the path of the Excel and because this is independent, so you don't know that you are just providing the sheet name and range. You don't know which Excel it is. What is the path of what is the address of the Excel, right? You can just drag and drop. See if you just drag and drop the terror con, right? If you just Dragging outside, what it is saying? So the red mark is error. Okay, and the yellow mark is warning. So just read that comments. Activity is valid only inside the Excel application scope or card. Drag it, it vanish the error. Okay, so uh, you can have to pass the value here. So otherwise, you just you. Uh, okay, I'm just using the workbook Excel activities only here. Um, input Excel path. That is a path we just assign path. Now, what is the sheet name? The sheet name is a sheet one only. Sometimes the sheet having the multiple sheet, multiple sheets are there in the Excel, right? Which sheet you are updating? You have to specify, right? So sometimes HR sheet is there, account sheet is there. Okay, so you have to specify as it is a sheet one. So I'm just keeping the sheet one only. And here, so which data you want to read? So you want to read from the range. There is a range, right? There is a range. Range means so. What is the range? I selected starting point and ending point. Can anyone tell? A one is a starting point, and D the D is like a column, letter and the row number. So D seventeen is a ending point. So for this, so to read this one, so what we have to do? So we have to use the like a so the range is like a so A one colon D seventeen like that. But I don't want to specify the range because uh, right now we have a data up to D36, but tomorrow it may add a new records. So day after tomorrow it may add and the records. So maybe the hundred records may come. Got it. But if that is the case, how can we every time so we are modifying the data? Okay, so it is a difficult, right? That's why 
keep it as empty. Remove this range field. Keep it as empty. If you keep it as empty, is what is what, what is that, that mean? So it will read entire data. Whatever the data is available, how many rows are available? It will read entire data. Got it? Okay. So it will read entire data. Now, once we read the data, once we read the data from the physical Excel file stored into your desktop or your system, the data will come into the memory. Right? The data is there in the Excel, is coming into the memory. In the memory, you have to imagine there is a tabular format. That is a data table. The data table contains the rows, columns, column names, row index. The row index or a column index, any index is start from the 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, like that. So what is the 0th index? This is the 0th index column. 1, 2, 3, like that. This is the 0th index row. 0, 1, 2, 3, like that. Okay, so here the output, so the, there is a property called output data tables. I'm just creating a variable. So you can create a variable from the variables panel or simply right click whenever, wherever you want the variable, create a variable uh, name like a DTBL, DTBL uh, server data. Okay, so DTBL server data. You can see the variable C here, DTBL server data. If I just select outside, so suppose for example, this one, okay. If I see the variables, where is the DTBL server, server data variable? I just created, right? I just created a one variable called DTBL server data, but it's not visible here because there is a scope. Understand? There is a scope for the variable, how, how, how uh, uh, long it has to access. But just go here, select this uh, project uh, activity and check the what is the scope. So the variable have the variable name, variable type, or scope and default value. The scope is a two. For example, see, uh, uh, there, there is a scope in the sense, for example, so we have a, in, in, in India, so multiple states are there, uh, within the states, again, so the districts are there, uh, within the districts, there is a mountain, right? So there is a villages, right? So this is a, like a scope. So so you have to increase the scope, then only we will get a, a able to uh, access. So I'm increasing scope to from the do. So scope means this is a this is a name. So it is mentioning here scope. So if I just make this as a different name. So uh, reading Excel, then this name will change here. The scope will change. Got it? So this is a do, and uh, for example, this is a load data. Uh, okay, so from that, from the do to do to uh, top level, top level. Okay, so that you can access the variable from here or any place. Got it. Now it is visible. So the scope is also we have to keep in mind. Now, once we read the range, read the data, and just call, you can collapse the uh, uh, containers. This is the sequence containers. You can collapse and uh, so expand the containers. Okay. Now we are reading. So see here what we are doing. So I'm just uh, giving the some notes here. So reading data from input from input dot xlsx uh, to it uh, to do it. so and, and store data to data table called DTBL. Okay, DTBL DTBL server data okay. so i'm just picking this uh, okay this one so so that you can understand so so yeah why we need to write these kind of things so properly because if i write the code i left the company or uh just imagine okay i left the company Someone else can see this code, understand what is going on inside this one, okay? So by just following the some logic, it's like a comments, okay? If you give the proper comments, not only others, so you also you create you created this project, and you move to the another projects, you move to the another project, so you, you just develop almost 30 projects uh, uh, up to this 